It's long been a dream of science to restore sight to the blind. Now it seems that once distant goal is closer than ever. Scientists around the world are racing to become the first to design a bionic eye. And an Australian team is leading the way with a device that could be ready for clinical trials within a year. Gavin Fang reports. This implant here is what we call our wide view implant. This is our first generation device. And the idea is to provide patients with the ability to be able to move around in their environment. It doesn't look like much, but this small device might prove to be the technological breakthrough that restores sight to the blind. Australia's been very, very lucky with the, the history we have here with medical bionics. The heart pacemaker um, had an important pace in Australia's uh, history of biomedical engineering. And then the cochlear implant grew out of that. And in a sense, the, the bionic eye is the next generation of devices in this development. Now that next generation might be within reach. In 12 months, a group of Australian scientists hope to begin clinical trials of a device called a retinal bionic eye. It works by using electrical currents to stimulate nerves at the back of the eye. There's a camera that we attach to a pair of glasses that will capture the image. That then gets processed and then sent through um, to a set of small electrodes at the back of the eye and the electrodes send out electrical impulses that are picked up by the surviving nerve cells there and sent to the visual processing centres of the brain. What we're expecting is that people will be able to see spots of light, which we call phosphenes. So, for example, if they were walking towards a door, they'll be able to see the edge of that mapped out with those spots. And obviously, as we improve the technology, the level of spots or pixels will improve. How's this? Yep, that's good. Is that good? Yep. Okay. The development of a bionic eye is something of a race between scientists around the world with different approaches to the same problem. The Australian technology is aimed at two of the most common forms of vision loss. There's a condition called retinitis pigmentosa which affects the peripheral part of that retina. So people lose the ability to see things to the edge, so objects, they're unable to drive, those sorts of things. And then age-related macular degeneration is the other condition that we're looking at. And with that condition, it actually affects the centre of the retina. So people are unable to see facial expressions, they can't read anymore, and those sorts of issues. Leeton Boyd was diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa when he was five. Good morning, how are you? Good morning, how are you, sir? What vision I have is just like looking down a straw, pinhole. I've lost, obviously, all my periphery. Yeah, he's got to make a few phone calls. <laughs> so I was born sighted and uh, uh, from my recollection, which isn't a, a lot at uh, five years of age, I, uh, I, as family, we went out and I was always the one that was a bit clumsy, I guess. Anybody with a disability tries to cover it up and not to tell people. And it's not always that easy to cover up uh, things when you as a child. Mr Boyd's vision is still deteriorating and he needs the aid of a cane to get around. His disease is incurable, but he says the prospect of a bionic eye gives him hope for the future. For argument's sake, for myself, you know, I'll be able to see my family's face. I've got a grandson who's 11 months old. You know, I'll be able to see him smile and when I walk in, I can... I'm, I, at the moment, I'm told Look, Angus is, you know, is smiling and all that, all stuff that I can't see. You know, I can physically see his body, but I can't see his face and his expressions. To be able to see that is, will be just a fantastic experience for me. If the development of the cochlear ear is a guide, then it could still be many years before the bionic eye technology is ready to implant. It's expected to cost about $60,000. Many of the team involved in this research worked on the cochlear ear, but they say the eye is a vastly tougher proposition. With a cochlear implant, there's about 12,000 cells in the ear that need to be simulated to get people to hear again. When you're talking about vision, it's actually about 1.2 million of the cells, so obviously it's a lot more complex system and will take a lot more research. The cochlea is a 
bony structure, the inner ear, it sort of protects, as it were, the nerve cells of the inner ear, whereas the eye, of course, is constantly moving and it is a very delicate structure. So it's, in fact, it's taken you know, a couple of decades for the technology to mature to the point where you can miniaturise it sufficiently to be able to put it into the eye. Bonded on to the first generation of the bionic eye will use 98 electrodes to stimulate the nerves at the back of the retina. Already work is being done on a second generation with more than a thousand electrodes that will give a clearer image. But bringing the world in full colour back to the blind is still a long way off. Colour is an extremely difficult aspect of vision to replicate, so there's actually millions of different types of cells in the back of the eye, and depending on what colour you look at, different proportions of those cells are simulated. So the most important thing for people that are completely blind is to get back some level of independence and improve their quality of life. And so that way, you know, giving the structured vision back is more important. If it doesn't help me, it'll help someone else, whether it's my children or grandchildren or their great, their grandchildren. And, and I'm very confident that a bionic eye and, and other research will help them.